，钓鱼只只好钓呀，钓你讲，他不打能力啊，要不就买。To be frank, um, you got to be of a certain age to know all these people that we're talking about, lah. You got to be, you've got to have lived that long to know some people that we talk about, lah. Because so this is, I think, is a very good example. Uh, I'm so young that I don't know who he is. Uncle might know, but uncle will know. This is Mr. Tay Koya. I know. Ah, uh, see, <laughs> <laughs> because um, he started. Uh, it's a Rex to Riches story. Okay, so he, he came to Singapore at the turn of the last century and he was just a, a general worker in the trading firm. Then um, he saved enough money to start his own business, um, dealing with uh, seafood products in, uh, in, in the region, in particularly salted fish. Okay, so that's how he, he made his money. Then jumped into 1930s and uh, he started a bus company called the Te Koyak Bus Company. Uh, and uh, during the prime, the bus company was the biggest bus operator around until the 70s, where you know they were all amalgamated to form the Singapore Bus Service. Okay, so that's what I mean by um, if you're of a certain age, you must know the bus company. Yeah, you know, no matter which part of Singapore you stay. Okay, um, so 1930s onwards, uh, bus company. So uh, what a lot of people do not know was that he was a war hero. So what happened was. Um, because of his connections, naturally, bus company, uh, he knew a lot of people. So, uh, coming towards the part whereby the, 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 the Japanese were coming down and um, the British uh, army were busy, you know, organizing the troops to defend, uh, Te Koya actually formed a civil defense troop of about 20,000 men to help to maintain law and order in the city. So, there wasn't any major rioting and looting during that time. He also formed uh, a, a rescue team of about 2,000 2, men to, to take care of the, the folks that were injured during the air raids, all those things. Uh, naturally, he became a target by the Japanese. So just before the Japanese came, he managed to escape together with um, our good friend Mr. Tankaki. Uh, some were not so fortunate. Our very good friend Dr. Lim Boon Keng and Dr. Tan Yin Kiam were getting old, uh, couldn't escape. That's why they were forced to, to be to form a committee to raise five five million. Five million? Mm. No, five million. Five, five or fifty million. Fifty million. Fifty million. Yeah. yeah, as compensation. Okay, because uh the um, the Japanese hated the, the Chinese okay. here because the Chinese here were, uh, were, 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 were 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 helping the China a lot just before the downfall. Okay? So um, and when he came back, when he came back, uh, when the, the British came back, he actually actively sought compensation for the his for his men who had who had passed away to get some money for the widows and the children of this man. So 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 a great man. Um, so so this one is is, is very good for for whom he did. So he's also from Qingmen again, the famous place. Um, so he was born in the the superior country calendar. Guangxi is six year. Guangxi is the, the emperor, Qing emperor. So this is another form of another way of um, how to read the calendar. So the sixth year of the reign of the Guangxi emperor. Okay. So this was the, the year he was born. This is the year he will pass away. And then you see there are two names. So this is his name, Te Koya. And then that's his wife's name. Uh, but his wife isn't buried here. Uh, do you know why? Uh, I have no idea. No idea. How you tell one, there's no photo, two, the color is different, three, there's no date. So the wife, they reserve a lot for her, but she isn't here. Okay, so children, uh, children, grandchildren. Okay, 
Uh, notable features, oh, yeah, of course it helps with this English now. Yeah. Notable features, this is a pair of um, golden, golden girl, Jake boy. Golden, huh? golden Jake boy, Jake girl. Uh, golden boy, Jake girl. Yeah. Yeah. So the male, Jake boy, golden boy, the female, uh, Jake, Jake girl. So the boy is, called, is uh, holding a sensor, incense burner, and she's holding a lotus, lotus flower. Okay, so the lines are outside. Hey, you, know, you know what is that? Uh, this matter, uh, uh, the uh, this one with the fan. Uh, wow, I cannot remember. Uh, one of the eight days. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, could be any of the Pasien, the eight uh, immortals. Could be, but I'm not sure because sometimes can't really see it very clearly what they are. So, um, obviously... I want to show you, right? Yeah. I don't read it. Oh, you don't read it? Huh? Uh, I read it. Louder, louder, louder. Louder. Yeah. So, the, the, the tomb... Instead of the tomb... The tomb builder has a left his uh, name card here. <laughs> <laughs> so, his name and uh, address. Well, but the address is invalid now. Okay. So I always say that a smart ancestor, uh, this part is not so important. What's important is that part where you're standing. So they bought um, enough land so that their descendants can stand here and pay respect when they stand. And they also have benches. Uh. Uh, apparently, uh, of course, bus company. Ma. So, um, so you can imagine during the funeral, all the buses and the bus drivers I came here to pay respect. Yeah. So I can imagine. Actually, I don't know whether there's enough space for all 120 buses here, but there must be quite uh, a sight. At his prime, he has 163 uh, buses. Yeah, so that's a, uh, one, of the, one of the company that has the most buses. So during his funeral, nobody could get to work. Because all the buses had to pay respect. Yeah, it was a very, very long funeral uh, trail. But the remains are here? Still? Remains are here. The descendants have been here to pay respect. Uh, this one hasn't been exhumed. You will not be. No, this is not stick. That one, no one can answer yet. Okay, let's go back to the road. Okay. Originally, we were looking for that person because that is the wife. 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 Oh. Tangken. Yeah, Tangken Chok. Yeah. For English. Yeah. So that is one of the wives because uh, the descendant. Uh, was uh, trying to complete the picture. So she found a great grand. Great grandmother? No, great great grandmother. Something like that. One of the wives was trying to complete the picture. Then, as we were bashing around, we found this one. Where's uh, Risuko? So happy! What does it mean? Her name. What does it mean? The name. The name. Yeah. Okay. So we stumbled wow. upon this particular tomb which uh, got us pretty excited because it's got Japanese inscription, mm. it's got Japanese name. Mm. So apparently uh, mm. two gentlemen buried her. So we're not quite sure what's their relationship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She has two daughters. Mm. But besides that we don't know anything else now. So uh, here we always say even though it's 99.9% .9 Chinese but we do have other races being buried here. So, no wait, this is the Chinese, but she's being buried by Japanese. Yeah. So, this one. There's English below. Uh, so the year. No, 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 no. This is the. What is the calendar you call this? A Koki calendar. Japanese Koki calendar. 1942, it says below. The old, the old Japanese calendar. Yeah. So, um, so this, 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 this lady passed away during the war. As you can tell, Min Guo, so it's 1943. 1942, so, 8th of May. Quite a, quite a few of the tombs that were, um, quite, a, quite, a, quite a few of the war tombs had Japanese calendar dates there. Oh, it's good. Well, English yeah. and below so, also. Uh, either willingly or unwillingly. Yeah. So this is a very yeah. interesting it's okay. example here. Yeah. Is so it to say that friends that weren't about friends we don't know. Yeah. 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 that her friends buried her or something? Clean up, repainted the, the words so you can see. Uh, so we, we've always known the angel, the cigar, we will talk more about cigar later. And then what's really amazing, which you can't see much now, is that along the mole, okay, um, there are carvings. 
So the third one, I'm going to show because of uh, longevity, wealth, and, and then we run the third one. And well, along the side, there are other carvings. So now, again, the vegetation grows very fast in Singapore, uh, the rain and the sun. Amazing. Um, so what we can infer from the descendant is that he, Mr. Seo Jin Che, was a, was a merchant that uh, dealt with uh, a, a lot of businesses with Indonesia. So this uh, in Rathlon, Keen, and one or more items. So he frequently um, uh, uh, transit between Singapore and Indonesia. Uh, what's more interesting to us is that he has three wives who are actually here. So this is the... Number one. Number one. From China. China. The bound feet. The bound feet one. Yep. So the number one is here. Two and three are behind you. Uh, one Singaporean, Nonya, and one Indonesian, Indonesian. So he knows how to spread his love around. Uh. <laughs> yep. Um, carving, carving. Do I know anything about carving? No, I don't know anything about carving. Sorry, can't help you. Yeah. So, so, um, so as you see, you, you've got to be diligent enough to actually come here regularly to clean up our house. So fast it becomes quite messy already. So when uh, Pukki Brown came up, uh, the other <laughs> cemetery started to, start to close down, make way for development. So uh, many of them found their way here. Uh, the, the problem was that uh, the problem was that um, when they moved here, of course, three oh, ashes are so this probably came in, in the forms of urns. So you don't really need that much space in between. But uh, they only moved the center piece of his stone here. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> as you see from previous uh, tombs, a lot of the descendant names are at the side. So, so, so it's a bit tricky to, to identify them because without the names of the descendants, you cannot be too sure whether they are your ancestors or not. So we, there's, so we believe that actually these will probably not be claimed because you can't be certain they are your ancestors. Because lots of people have the same names sometimes. Right? So, and of course, yes. Um, the reason why they are facing the black towards us because we are on higher ground. So usually the two face uh, up here. That's why it's not facing us. Everybody, I'm ready to go. Uh, this tomb because of some interesting features, uh, mainly the photos on a, what do you call this emblem? Two badge. Yeah, as well as the stone seats. But when we, we do a search on uh, online, uh, there's very there's not much information. So we know that Tok Cheng Tuan worked in an Anglo-French firm. Um, he suffered a uh, bullet wound. The bullet was lost behind his back and he lived for another year before he passed away. Uh, we know that um, his wife's posthumous name is inverted from his name. So he's uh, Tok Cheng Tuan and, and her name is uh, Guan Cheng. Inverted. What is the meaning of posthumous? Posthumous means it's the name given after the person passed away. Some, uh, mostly, uh, one reason is because maybe the original name sounds too ugly. Uh, another so reason glam. is because yeah. not so glamorous. Yeah. Another reason is uh, they want to improve the fortunes of the family, so they alter the, the name wow. according to some fortune teller, you know, advice. Um, what else? Uh? Really not much. Really not much. Until. September, when uh, we make uh, we make contact with the descendants, then they came, they saw and they conquer, and uh, they share about their story, which Claire will continue. So basically, we did not know a lot about uh, uh, him except the fact that he had a bullet wound. And uh, when the descendants uh, contacted us, they were themselves surprised. They did not know this about uh, their grandfather. So they asked us how we knew, and we told them about the search and the archives and so forth. So as you can see from the size of this tomb, he must have been a very prominent person and he must have been someone who is very modern in his time because the tomb has uh, art decor features and he is very dapper in a tuxedo. Although she is in her Peranakan uh, outfit. What we discovered in talking with the descendants in the end was how the sad story of the widow. Because she had to raise, as you can see, six children. All right, two sons and four daughters. And sadly, Fortunately, he was successful. He left uh, apparently about nine houses to them. 
So she was able to raise money selling the houses or renting them out to raise the children. Unfortunately, when the war came, these two boys were taken by the Japanese. Is anyone familiar with the Sokching Massacre? You know about Nanjing Massacre and the Sokching Massacre, yes? So after the fall of Singapore on February the 15th, 1942, between uh, February 18th and March the 4th, about 50 to 100,000 Chinese in Malaya, meaning Singapore and Malaysia, were murdered. So these two were taken away. It's a very sad story. One had just married and the other one was uh, engaged to be married. The photos are on our blog. She then had to raise, you know, her daughters and the grandchildren on her own. Her eldest daughter also died in childbirth. So now the matriarch of the family had to raise her children and her grandchildren. She had a very, very tough life. If you look at the blog post that we made and the photo of her, you'd be very surprised. A lot of people are very surprised that she was only 60. She looks 90. She's completely bent over. She had a very, very tough life, even though, you know, fortunately for her, he did die a rich man and leave quite a bit for her. Um, this uh, tomb has been donated to the Peranakan Museum. So, uh, good fortune that we will at least be able to see uh, it you know, to the end. Now, these uh, are also very unusual tomb panels. There are four tomb panels. They're called the Four Loves, Loves the Four Flowers. And it tells the story um, of an intellectual of a certain dynasty, Song Dynasty, and the Four Loves. So all that detail is actually on the blog. I'm not going to belabor the point. But it's only one of very few tombs in Bukit Brown that have all four panels. When you, you're going to go over to Si Tiong Wah's tomb very soon, and it has two of the four panels. And four panels are only possible when you have a double cluster like this. Okay? Now, when we contacted the descendant, or they contacted us rather, and told us the story and wanted to save this tomb, Raymond, who has just passed by, Raymond, who is the tomb whisperer of Bukit Brown, then said, Did you know that your grandparents' parents are behind them? No, we just know them as grandpa, grandma. We didn't know their names. That's their there's a changeable hawk flying right by. Yeah, resident raptor. Yep. And then what happened is that uh, they said, how do you know? And we said, well, very well. Look, the son's names and daughter's names are here. They are behind as the grandchildren oh. of that person buried behind. So we have found the parents of the wife. She's right here. The father. Right. The father. The father. And he has two grandmothers. And they're right there. So sadly for them, in the process of uh, finding, uh, you know, this story, they have also found that more of their relatives will be affected, and they'll all be exhumed together, and they will, they will, fortunately, because it was identified, they'll all go together in the same niche in the columbarium. So when we tell the story, it's a very good uh, story about how Bukit Brown is a resource, a repository of information. I think without that, they would not have known their great-grandparents' names, and then they're they are continuing to do their research. So they've been sending stuff over to me and we're trying to consolidate the, the family tree and so forth. Okay, so uh, basically other things to, uh, to, to just note uh, would be the fact that this is quite a fusion tomb. Beautiful Chinese panels, beautiful carvings. Dragon for the male, phoenix for the female. So come up close and have a look at the carvings. But also you'll see, of course, the Western-style panel, it's Western wear. She has the Peranakan clothes, so she has also not taken on the Chinese from the mainland Chinese, the, the, the wear, but also not modern mm. Western. <laughs> and then, of course, there are English words at both sides. Mm. So very, very, uh, very much a fusion tomb. And the tomb design itself tells of the evolution of our society, of leaving behind China, building a new life here, working for the colonial masters, getting a Western education, and so on and so forth. Claire, do you know whether there's any significance to using this shield design? Did they have like, their own coat of arms or armorial? No, uh, from what we understand, he, he could have travelled a lot mm. and he was just inspired you mm. know, by this design. Mm. Um, it's a bit overgrown now, so if you just walk where Han Chong is, Han Chong is from Nature Society by the way, Hi, morning. and you would see that there are, there are beautiful there blue tiles on the, on the shore. They cannot be saved in the for the donation to the museum, so enjoy it now. Go and have a look. Very beautiful pale blue tiles. What, is, what do the birds mean? Huh? This is a very unique thing from the ground. The benches, they can't because they're molded and stopped here. And also, uh, an interesting thing, you know, uh, projecting that when the exhumation comes, we'll be here to observe. Um, we have been told by the tombkeepers that this one has been like much longer time ago. So you can tell that this one has not collapsed.
Now, if she died, you know, very well respected person, flower, flower. with some wealth left to her, we think that this could be a spectacular coffin. The high oh, must dig in there. Yeah. So we do not know. From the other side, the more exposed. That, uh, oh, more exposed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. nicer, cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe she was buried with her prom. The one got cut. But we read her story in the blog. Uh, I have confessed that when I was editing it, I, I wept. It was very sad. So if, if she was very sad, that we do not know. Yeah. Please order. So you see the feelings? It is into a towel. So no point. No point. Wall. One only one side. The other side don't have. Nobody can see that. Feng Shui thing for me. Yeah, Feng Shui. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Okay, how are you? I'm good. Uh, glad to see you. See you too, I guess. Okay. Okay. No, I'm good. I need to ask you a favor. Very big favor. I'm sorry. Like her? If you are interested to help. With uh, contributing or helping to moderate the NSF. Okay, better for now. Because that's the more interesting help. Huh? Huh? You think you do that? Yeah. yeah. What? So basically, it's uh, you see, just see your hoping on myself. That. But most of the time, the coffin is putting the, the people uh, I, I, I will actually just be the one deleting all the stairs. <laughs> yeah. But we have been uh, quite, quite, quite uh, compassionate. La. As in, when there's a spam, I just delete the post. I, I, I don't remove the user or ban the user so far. But there, yes, last night I think there was one recalcitrant one, so I actually removed the user. Actually, there's a three-step process. You can just delete the post and that's it. You can delete and remove the user from the group. And you can... And you can also even... Uh, then the last step is you can, there's a checkbox where you can permanently ban the guy. Even. Yeah, that's the most extreme measure. Lah.